which is going to have its annual shake-up on Friday and Saturday. 149 competitors, some of them in weird and wonderful machines, prepare for this event. It is known to be rough and dusty. 52 cars, 57 motorcycles and 30 quads are going to compete. Friday afternoon, after scrutineering at the headquarters of the Tarkestad showground, is where all drivers and riders leave from for the 30-kilometer time trial to determine the starting position for Saturday's 370-kilometer race. Uh, there's a bye bye rough in but uh, also, they have good gefahr here. Today, also, the time trajectory is very, very rough. So, I think tomorrow is it a question of what they carry by car, what they with their car, what they don't want to do. When they say a caution, yeah, they mean a caution. There's no, you can't afford to miss one. You already do something drastic to your car. So, but other than that, um, yeah, try and keep the car together. And you know, obviously, if you can stay on the road. Your chance of punctures and damage in your car less and so you don't want to be taking too many wrong turns or anything like that. Getting his BMW M3 engine Land Rover from Rob Green Motors into tip-top order is Cliff Barker. Um, yeah, we're starting to get to the rough races now. The next three are obviously the, all the rough ones. Um, it's a nice race here. It varies from rough to quite smooth roads. Um, the time trial was very, very rough, but only 25 k's long, so obviously the space frames will have the advantage, you know, but uh, we'll see about, about tomorrow. Um, it's just a case of staying on the route. The, the, the route's so rough, the minute you step off it, um, that's where you run into problems, so it's just, just going to be a, a case of keeping it on the road. A well-known car, the Shamir Variava Scalso, now has new owners Kerrit and Lawrence Duplessis. And the championship leader overall so far this year in the Reptile Gel Pajera is Neil Woolridge and Paul Fermark. Well, obviously we're very happy with leading the championship, although it's quite a standard lead. <clears throat> There's still three races, including this one, till the end of the year. And I think it's going to go right down to the wire. We, we are leading, but it's still very, very close because of the, uh, the way the points position works for the, uh, for the overall production class. Uh, if the marking is anything like last year, it uh, won't make my job too difficult. Today the marking was pretty good. It was run down in a couple of places, but uh, I don't think it'll be a problem, no. In the production vehicle class for Bucky's or the experienced Cassie could see and Pete Swanepoel in the Castle Toyota. Well, first we quite lucky. I think we're in a good position to do well. Uh, secondly, it's Pete's birthday today. He turns 50, so both of us are real old toppies. And together it's a, a big experience between of us. The race themselves is extremely rough. I never see it in my life before. It's first, second and short while in third gear. So I think if we're keeping the Hilux uh, together tomorrow, uh, we can do well tomorrow, hopefully. It's very, very shaky. I'm having difficulty in reading. It's very, very bumpy, very rough. But we'll try and we'll see how far we get. Hopefully with their four-wheel driving tech this time of the Birkin brothers in the Castle Toyota in Class E. We've been developing the vehicle. Um, it's gone better event after event. And tomorrow we just, just want to finish and we'll be happy. And the last three events in the year are the, the, the roughest events. So if we can basically end this event in four-wheel drive, then we've solved the problem. Well, we hope so. 7 o'clock on Saturday morning. The race is going to be held over a 185-kilometer course, which competitors have to complete twice. Total distance, of course, 370 k's. And being in South Africa, of course, early start in winter means an icy cold morning. The first car away is going to be the local Castrol Jimco of Greg Harvey and his navigator, Boy Stone. We, we're feeling fairly confident. Last year, we won the race. Um, and, you know, obviously, the local knowledge helps to a certain extent, but you've still got to ride to win the race. So, you, you know, pulling off first, we're not going to have a dust problem. And, you, you know, hopefully we can just get out there and consolidate a lead and try and stay out front till the end. The terrain is very rough, though, so we've really got to conserve tyres and things like that. We've got to try and get up front and keep it as long as possible. Lead in Class A and second away this morning will be the Chepex France Senior and Junior. I think it's a car breaker this race, so the thing here is to hang in and try and uh, save the car. Don't go too wild at the beginning. If you, it's also going to be a lot of dust this morning, there's not much wind blowing and uh, it's going to be quite bad, you know, the first one to start is going to have a bit of, bit of an advantage. Uh, I'll be doing the, the second half of the race. Um, the first half is going to be where everybody's going to sort themselves out, um, get out of the dust and sort of find their positions and places. And then uh, second loop, normally a bit quicker uh, and hopefully a smooth run right to the end. And that team is certainly going to be hard to beat. They won three out of the four races so far as we wait for the start. With all that dust expected, just have a look at the helmet there where they feed filtered air into their special helmets. Now the cars are going to start thick and fast. Harvey and Stone first away in the Castle Jimco. Then the Chepex France Junior and Senior. Senior's driving at the moment. Stanley Illman and Franz Stangl. Listen to that Porsche engine. These are big vehicles, these. 
the quick fit race co of uh, Newton Love and Colin Fote is next. And then the Yokohama shot, Mighty Castle Toyota Land Cruiser of Ranica and Robin Alcott. John Weir Smith, Murray Hume in their race co. And then comes another mighty machine. This is the Rob Green Land Rover there, Cliff Barker and Malcolm Jubey. And they've been doing so well in this race. That one certainly goes. Here's a vehicle from Mitsubishi uh, Racing that makes winning look very easy. The Repro Gel Pajera of Neil Woolridge and Paul for Mark. Of course, that's the one they use in the Parry Dakar. We're up front there. We're leaving Tarkestock now on the way to Adelaide. Harvey and Stone are the pathfinders. Of course, they've got no tracks to follow. And uh, this is where navigation is so important. They've got a Lexus 300 motor in the back then with an automatic box. They started second. They're still second on the course. The Chepex, they take it easy as always in the early stages, just finding their feet. That very sorted out vehicle hasn't missed a beat all year. Look at that huge wheel travel they've got. And thanks to that suspension, of course, a flat six uh, engine at the back revs along happily at 8,000 RPM. Ilman and Stangl, third on the road at the moment, looking for the right line. And these race cars that you see there, very special custom-made machines from the state. A lot of weight on the back wheel so they can get grip, and as uh, you can hear, lots of low-down grunt. That's also a, a flat-six Porsche engine, laced to a Tiptronic gearbox from an Audi. Right, hurrying along, Newton and Love in their quick foot race car. Cozy little cockpit, that one, they've got a two-litre Porsche engine in that. Leaving Tarkestad into the crew-like terrain, here's the Castle Toyota, Reineke and Houghton, and they're flying along. Wait, make one mistake here, and you're in serious trouble. Getting very dusty, still early morning, Woolwich and Mark. not easy to see where you're going, and you lose time there, uh, just as dust just hanging. Duplices in the ex variava uh, Scalza, that's a car that's been successful this year, and it flies along one of the fastest in this race. And what do we have coming out of, out of the dust? It's the uh, Krobler and Charlie Walmart's uh, new Toyota Hilux from Clarksdorf. They won their class in Sugar Belt 500, and that vehicle really does get along. Sounds crisp as well. Peter Hosbrook and Bosch in the uh, Land Cruiser, Botswana registered Land Cruiser. Fastest in the time trials, can you believe it? Pretty confident doing well. No power steering that one. It absolutely destroyed the hands there of Hosbrook, and his shoulders take a tremendous beating. The leader in uh, Class B, who else? The single seat of Tom Smith. He's finished in all four previous races, won most of them. That's in a locally made Mighty Mighty Mac. Billy Bond and Graham Newton in the Sandmaster getting on with the job. As they get out of that tough section, we out into the Karoo now. This is what it looks like at 160 k's an hour. Instruments are pretty basic in this one. All the driver needs really is a rev counter to protect his engine. Into the lead, the Chepex, they've just, it's 120 k's into the course, they say it's rough, it's really rough, although that suspension look, makes it look like a main road, normal 4x4 would four, just struggle along here. And here they are, 1 and 2, that's all there is in it, it's the Chepex in front, Harvey and Stone are just behind them, they're just about 20 seconds behind as they come up to the first marshalling uh, control, bit of paperwork to do. Now France Junior's got to get to his work, he's got to navigate, he says go over there to the right hand side, which way, difficult, you can run, run slot so easily, we're in the front here, we go onto the road, now you turn left, and we're on our way, now the pressure's on behind him, so he's got to watch in his mirrors as well, as we watch Cliff Park and Jaber, at last able to give that, must be the fastest Land Rover in the world, M3 BMW engine, fiberglass body at the back, and it's really flying along. Cliff is known as Mr. Nice Guy, he's also won his class in the roof of Africa. Harvey and Stone, the gym car. Sounds like a slipping class, but in fact, automatic. Nice way to go off-road racing. Oh, does that sound nice or what? Big power down there as they uh, tear along. Quickfoot race car, just fighting for grip. Newton Love is looking for those hard patches to get a grip there. Nicely down dirt vehicle. Look at all that suspension it's got. The Birkin brothers in their 2.7 litre Toyota Hilux, they used to rally before, they won their class three times this year, going very well as Cassie could see in Pete Swanepoel in another Castle Toyota. And everywhere you look, this Castle Toyota, there's the Pajera flying along as well, as the quads wait for the start, we talk to two of the favourites. Well, I feel very good, a little bit of a but I feel very good. I see the day of the day, it's not a long wetter, it's a short wetter. Well, judging by the time trial, it's going to be quite a tight, tight race. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be like that for the whole week. But if it is, I think it's going to be quite nice for us. Beautiful from the towel, nice hard stuff. Uh, so we're going to give it all our best, eh? And the Dakar legend takes off. Vickers van Diemert in a hurry. He wants to get on the job. Brendan Bardos in the Joburg Yamaha. Of course, he won the Sugar Belt. Champion leader, John Craig Cassell in the Johannesburg Yamaha. And are they racing or what? 
they, how they keep this up for so long, I just do not. They stand a little bit, sit a while. Brendan Barnos once again, he's really getting off the job. Shook everybody by winning the Sugar Belt 400 at Vickers van Diemenda. It's like motocross on four wheels. Here he comes. He stands a bit. He sits a bit. He revs that little 350 twin cylinder Yamaha engine to the limit. Fully kitted 360cc Yamaha. He's flying. These guys are going to be mental racing at these speeds. This Barnos now. He has it fully open there. Capable 180 k's and as we say, behind him the uh, championship leader has done a bit of winning this year too. It's the uh, Johannesburg Yamaha Banshee. They're called Banshee. Good name for them and that is uh, John Craig Costello. And some others. This is Paul Chompsa from Natal too. They seem to thrive in this sort of ter territory. Uh, th these, these are difficult machines to uh, ride but these guys make it look so easy as they race along. A few unnumbered bikes coming through there, all Yamahas of the L class basically all Yamahas. And the first of the 200s, another Yamaha. These are the little blasters, 200cc uh, two-stroke single. He's won three races so far. He's had a second place in his, uh, well, in his way to the championship. Addictive Racing Developments Yamaha of Cornell de Villiers. Hello, here's something new. A prototype uh, KTM quad in its first race, been ridden there by Addictive Racing's Dion Belcher. It's 8.45, an hour after the quads have departed. And how do the fastest competitors of all think they'll play this race? I think today to try and get into front and use the dust to the best of your ability, but you know, um, I don't know, just see what, what, what the day brings. At the beginning of the year I had a crash, so I'm a bit out of the championship, but I'm keen to have a win today. But we'll see how it goes, it's a bit dusty, but we'll see how it goes. I think it's going to be a the problem with the stuff. I can see it's a bad run, I don't know how it's I think I'm very nice and I'm going to come to the IPS. Is that good Afrikaans or what? Fastest in the time trial, first away, Quinton Milton, the Connex Internet Honda. Rion Fenikik, unbelievably, the AJA, LC Castro KTM, little 200 is second away. The big 500 of Alfie Cox, it's a Natro Frank KTM, in fact it's a 380. And Errol Dalton, that's a full-blown auto-paid cellular 500 uh, Honda, that one. So they leave the starting area in the Tarkestat showgrounds and out onto the course. You can hear that big Sally Yamaha, that four-stroke Yamaha of Lance Trithui. Sounds lovely. Got Clayton Ensler on the leaf, uh, Russell Campbell, Kawasaki, not far behind. So as the bikes set off, the cars which started two hours ago, just about due for their first pit stop. And here are the leaders, the Chepix, sounding very good, as this always does. And they're going to have a driver change. Ilman and Stungle, the old team, are back in business, second overall in their race car, so they've passed Harvey and Stone. And France Jr., he's in the seat for his 185 kilometer drive. And then the mighty Castel Toyota Land Cruiser with the Yokohama tyres, RP and uh, Robin Houghton lead the trucks in by a long way. Just watch this for a well drilled pit stop. <laughs> As they get ready to depart, John Weir Smith, Murray Hume in the gym car. Big vehicle with all that suspension, as we pointed out before. Four of them on each side. And there's the Matins, Henry and Morris, making racing that Pajero look like a Sunday afternoon drive. This vehicle is so standard, also from Mitsubishi Racing. That used to be the press test vehicle. And what do the quick fit team of Newton Love and Pote think of this event so far? I don't know. Very rough uh, and very fast. Good mixture of both. Um, we had a flat, but otherwise going well, going well, going to get out there now. Right, thank you. As the Buckies start to arrive for the stop first to the uh, Class E Buckies, the Birkins in the lead, and guess what, they haven't got a front of once again in the lead by three minutes. Here's a big competition from Clarkstorp, Trouble and Volmans in the Harlux, and fourth fastest in the race this morning so far, the husband and wife team, Tony Yo and his wife Mandy in that Sabat Land Rover there on Continental Tires. They've got a BMW 2.8 engine, also very crisp, and makes that vehicle get along so quickly. 